Have you ever just had one of those creative itches that needed to be scratched? I'm John Switzer and welcome back to Black Bear Forge. The candle holder we're going to look at today is just one of those little creative itches. Last night I was looking at various things on the internet, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and I saw different things. They didn't have anything to do necessarily with candle holders or this design, but somehow overnight they kind of all blended together. And this morning when I got up, something vaguely like this is what I saw in my mind's eye, and I just had to try it out before I forgot what I was thinking. I don't think this is exactly what I saw in my mind's eye, and I don't know if the thing I saw would ever really exist anyways. And this is going to be our project for the day. So for today's candle holder idea, I found several pieces of material in the scrap buckets outside. And these are inch and a quarter wide. Two of them are quarter inch thick, so that's six mil by, oh, about 30 mil. And the other one looks like it's about three sixteenths of an inch thick, so that's probably more like four mil, but also inch and a quarter or 30 mil wide. And I think these are what I'm going to do most of the parts of the candle holder out of. The heavier ones will be the upright and the base. And then the lighter one I think I'll actually make the candle cup out of. But then I also have this 4 inch square piece of 8 inch material that I just happen to have a bucket full of these because they were miscut at the steel yard. And they've already got a nice little hole in it. And we'll use this for the candle pan on our candle holder. I've got a fire in the forge and I'm ready to get to work. So let's get to work. So to start with, I'm going to do this short piece and that will become the upright for the candle holder. And it's about 11 inches or 275 millimeters long, something like that. And I think that'll be the upright. This other longer piece will draw out, flare a little bit, and then scroll up, and that will be the base for the candle holder, and what it actually gets supported by. And it's 18 inches or 450 millimeters long. So let's start with this piece, and then we'll do this one. I'm gonna start just by knocking the sharp corners off of this but not all the way down to the bottom where that other scroll will attach. I want to leave a cleaner attachment point there. And you could certainly take the time to do some chisel work or file work on this if it so suits your temperament at the moment. And I want to keep it pretty simple. Let's upset this end some just to give the very top of it some character and interest. So we'll leave a little bit sticking out of the vise. the anvil and straighten it a little bit and then come back to the vise and upset it a little bit more. I just want to gently take the bow out that is kind of inevitable when you're doing an upset like that. But don't put the upset up here, you end up just making it worse unless you absolutely have to. Because right there I can see that it wasn't centered. Now that's centered again. So back to the vise. Now 
That is pretty much what I'm after for the upset. One last straightening at the anvil. I think I'll go ahead and touch mark this piece. Now until time for assembly, I think I'm done with this piece. That brings us to the piece that will be the, the base for the candle holder. And again, I'm going to flare this out, and I have been thinking about how I'm going to attach that square plate for the drip pan. I think I'm going to do a bolt-in scroll here that's a forge welding exercise, and forge welding is always a good thing to see. So we'll flare this out, and we're going to let it all kind of come to one side. I'm going to weld a piece of round bar, that's the, the bolt part into that so it's got a nice big heavy end and then we'll scroll it up. I'm going to start by drawing this out. I'm starting with the cross pin just to get more effect quickly. But as I do this I'm going to want to keep it all in line on one side here. That way that'll sit flat when it's all scrolled up and it won't make the candle holder rock. I'm not going to try and taper this entire bar. I just want to get the end cleanly tapered and smooth, or even I should say. This bar had a little bit of a round end, so it's kind of rounded off there. And for our bolt in scroll, I want that to be straight across. So I'll trim that. The straight end will just make the weld go smoother. There's our cut in. Now I'm going to go to a piece of 5 8 round bar. I want to forge a tenon on the end. Decide how far up off the table I want this little base to stand, or the little wax pan to stand, and then we'll figure out how much of this gets welded in and nick it so that we can break it off later. It's going to take a little tiny bite with the guillotine tool. You don't need much of a rivet on here or tenon. That should give us something to work with. And I'll put some tenoning dies in here that will give us a quarter inch tenon. And refine this down to a quarter inch, starting square. Now octagon, and then we can round it up. And in the next heat we'll refine the shoulder there with a monkey tool. The 
key tool just helps square up that shoulder so everything will fit nice in the long run. You rotate everything as you go, you can keep an eye for whether or not you're going off center. It gives you plenty of time to correct it. So it gives me a nice shoulder that our drip pan should set down on. So here then is the upright. I'm going to put the candle holder part up into here somewhere, which means the scroll is going to be down in here. And I just want the drip pan to be under there someplace. I'm not going to make the candle sit on it, I don't think, although I could. Let's do that. Let's bring that up far enough the candle will be able to sit on it. So I kind of see where I'm going to need to cut this off there. I'll start with a little nick. Now typically when you do a uh, bolt scroll like this, you leave it attached to the handle so you can break the round bar off. But this is so long that I think that's not really necessary. I've got plenty of material to hold on to with the tongs while I bring this together. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this all the way off. What I will do then is bring these out, both at welding heat. Now this one's heavy, this one's really thin, so I have to start with this one in the fire, get it close, then I can bring this one up to heat. I'll put this in the swedge, trap it with that as close to the end as I can get, get rid of these tongs, and then set the weld. And typically for a bolt-in scroll at that point, once the weld is set, that's when you snap the rod off and you can get rid of it. And and finish your scroll, but this is going to stay in the finished piece. But before we do that, as usual, clean out your fire. That's going to be pretty good. Go ahead and flux it again and put it back in the fire just to be absolutely sure. Since this is holding the drip pan up, I'd hate for it to break off from a weak weld. Start scrolling this up. I think I might scroll it up far enough to get one more little welding pass there, just, just to be super sure. Plus, I think I've got way more than enough to catch my scroll here. I'm going to start scrolling. This thing is going to make it want to twist, so I'm going to have to keep dealing with that tendency for that center bar to twist. It's going to be really hard to get back into here if it's not right. So take your time and get this initial part of the scroll in as good as you can. With any luck, I'm done messing with that area that's welded, and all the rest of my heats will be back here. I'm also going to do a little bit of softening of these edges before I scroll too much. 
I'm not going to do a lot here. I just want to make sure that it's not a real sharp edge anywhere. The area that we flared out is already softer and has a little bit of texture to take the factory roughness off or sharpness off, I should say. So we can scroll this over the edge of the anvil, just like I've been doing here, and get pretty accurate results as long as you keep looking at it and seeing where it needs to be corrected. There's still that tendency for this thing to want to kind of flop over to the side because this is so heavy. I'm just going to make sure regularly to stop and check it and make sure it's standing upright. A lot easier now than it will be later to fix it. But even then, a, a torch and a little heat down here can correct some minor things. And the other thing we can do to bend this is just bend it in the bending forks, which is a fairly controlled way to go. But before I do that, I'll knock, knock the sharp corners off here. With a pair of bending forks, we should be able to see this a little bit better as we scroll it up. It can often be much more precise. Learning to do it at the edge of the anvil, though, is a good skill as well. In the long run, bending forks are a tool that, if you're doing any kind of ornamental work, scroll work, you're going to want bending forks. As I run out of heat, time to heat it again, although once again, I'm going to jump ahead or jump to the other end. I want to go ahead and do an upset on this that will sort of mirror the upset on the other side, except it all has to be pushed to one side so it sits flat. Probably should have done this before I got this far with it. You kind of get on a roll with one thing and forget what you're doing. Pulled a little too much while I was messing with it. So back in the fire. Again, I'm trying to pull it to the top side. Make sure that's all down. I'm also going to make sure it's all off to one side so that when we assemble this, it won't interfere with riveting this piece in there. But now we can go back to finishing our scroll here. I think I'll just hold on to this end and not get any of this hot again and finish it from there. On the other hand, doing it this way it does kind of force you to think a little bit upside down or backwards or something. It just isn't what you were doing before. But we should be able to figure it out. Luckily, there's not much more to go here.
and keep making sure it's all going to sit flat. I'll put this on a big steel table before we're done to make sure it really sits flat since my anvil is not perfectly flat. Now I don't want this off there. I want this piece to point to the center line of this when it's done. So I'm going to put a little bend in here. For now I'm just going to kind of eyeball what I want there. And then later we'll probably have to come back through with a torch and bending forks or something to get it just exactly right. That's not bad though. So hopefully you're seeing where we're going with this. That's going to stand up there like that. Next thing I think I'll do is go ahead and dish this pan that'll catch the wax. And I don't want to make a big bowl out of it or anything like that. I just want to lightly bring the edges up and I'll just do that freehand here at the anvil instead of trying to sink it in a swedge. And I think that'll be plenty to catch what wax this candle might leave. To do that, I'm just going to kind of lift with the tongs as I forge this. Most of the swedges I have are round, so it's going to give it kind of a round bottom, and that's an interesting effect, but it's not really what I wanted to go for with this. I'm going to try and work right into this corner so it kind of sort of has a mitered corner. I think that's all I want to do. It'd be really easy to get carried away with this and start to wrinkle it up and do things you'd regret later, I think. Just has to catch a little bit of wax dripping. That's all that'll do. That then brings us to our last part of this, and that's the part that actually holds the candle. So this will get wrapped for the candle, but I'm going to leave the tail open so there's a, hopefully a little springiness in it so it'll clamp down on the candle. And then it'll, that wrap for the candle will hang out in here somewhere, wherever centered over that pan we just forged is, and then it will rivet to the side of the upright. So I'm going to start this in the butcher tool here and create a little end for it. I think I'll just kind of round this up, so I'm going to start off. That might need a little filing to get just exactly what you want in the long run, but that's kind of what I'm going for anyways. I don't think this will have much spring and you won't really be opening it up much, but there might be a little bit. I'm going to offset that before I bend my circle. I'm just going to use this little bending jig we use for hooks and bend that around.
It'll do a little bit more bending there. This just happens to be the same diameter as the candle. Yeah, I think that'll be better. I'm going to want to move this back out of the way some. I want this to kind of come in center of the candle. Uh, just a little fiddling there. is for this to then be centered over where our wax pan will be in the same length as this. I'm going to leave just a little bit for the upset and put a little nick in there that I can find again when it's hot. make my upset easier, I'll go hit that little burr that's left on the grinder. So we just repeat the upset we've been doing, more or less. It's all going to go to one side so that upright can go right in here. But this one can flare both ways in this direction. That's probably got plenty of texture in it just from all the work that it's had done, but that's about it. We're going to let this cool. I'm going to clean this up and then we'll start putting the whole thing together. I'm going to clean up this little finial or thumber or whatever you want to call it. As I say, I don't think you're ever going to get much spread for that, but if it's just enough to get the candle in, and I think it will be, that's all you need. Well, let's take a look at this and see what the components are all going to go together like. The drip pan goes up there on top of that tenon. Then this upright will go over here. Now, this doesn't quite sit flat, so I'm going to need to put a bow in here or straighten it out. I guess it's already got a, a bow I don't like. But just so you can see what it's going to look like, we'll do a little test fit here, then we'll fix that. And then this will go up here, and hopefully you can see that this does not line up because this is not centered over the pan. I want this to move that way, and I'll take care of that right down in here by heating that with a torch and bending that. But I think we'll do all the assembly first. So that means drilling holes. And what I'm going to do is drill 3 8 holes the single 3 8 hole in each of these pieces, line that up with the upright, drill the hole in the upright so everything matches and lines up. But then I'm going to drift those out to 3 8 square so I can make little rivets out of 3 8 square bar and that'll keep this from wanting to rotate. This might have some leverage on it. Usually I don't much worry about it. Round rivets can hold plenty tight, but I think this is one people might mess with trying to get the candle in there. Once we do that, then I will probably put this on first, rivet these on.
Now I don't have an exact size drift, so I'm going to use a tapered drift and just drive it in till it's square. And then we'll check it with the stock for the rivets. going to work. I'm going to straighten this back out again. It's a little bit crooked. And we'll do the other end. Now this other end I managed to get that hole a little off. My drill bit slid over because my center punch mark wasn't deep enough. So I think what I'll do is heat this side down. This side will stay cooler and that way the drift will tend to move that direction. moved it much but it's probably a little better. I think we'll go one more heat. You can see that it did bulge out more on this side so it did push it over a little. Not real critical in the long run. I don't think anybody will notice that. I need to cut my rivet material so that it will be the right length. I'm going to leave one and a half times the, the square dimension here. These aren't going to be round head rivets. They'll be square kind of pyramid head. So that's just a, an arbitrary amount. So this is all about a quarter inch thick. The one piece is a little bit thinner. So I'm going to cut these uh, about an inch and a half, maybe just a hair longer than an inch and a half. Let me get the base of the rivet good and hot so it doesn't cool off quite so fast when I put the torch down. And really, just like this, would be an interesting candle holder for a big pillar candle, one that doesn't need a, a cup to support it. So that should do that. By using the cross pane, I can kind of start spreading that out a little bit. And that gives me a good start on that side. Now I want to start this other side.
Okay, that's a start. I don't want to get this whole rivet hot at this point because it's way too long on this end. So I just want to get the end hot and start working the head and flipping it back and forth. Hopefully once it starts to swell up some, we get rid of the vice grips. All right, it's together. Only we need to do now is make sure that that centers up over the pan. To do that, I'm going to heat right through here and just give it a little twist. That's pretty good. I'm going to get the two uprights to line up in the same plane. It'll look much better. So I'm just going to set this on top of the forge fire and get it hot but not red hot. Just hot enough to melt some wax and we'll put a wax finish on it. And then double check it for flat if I need to do a little grinding on the bottom to get things to sit flat. But right now it feels like it's pretty solid. It's an oddball, that's for sure. Well, I suppose that satisfies that creative itch. I get to see kind of what my idea looked like. Now, when I first saw this, I didn't see it with a drip pan on it or the center shaft. I added that because so many people want drip pans because they want to protect their fine furniture. And that's really a good idea when you make candle holders. So that was kind of an afterthought as I started working on this. My original thought was just down here. And I still think I might have liked the original idea a little bit better. Kind of hard to say, but this did come out. It's a perfectly usable candle holder. It does hold the candle that I want it to hold. I don't know if you'd call this industrial, contemporary, modern, or just plain weird, but part of me kind of likes it and part of me thinks it was just a chance to scratch that itch and see how it came out. Now frequently I put these things in my Etsy shop. I pick a price for it and I put it in there and it's first come first serve. Whoever's the first one to realize it's there gets it. But I thought maybe I'd try something a little bit different. I'm going to put this over on eBay and I'll put a link to the auction down below. I'll run the auction for 10 days. If you want it, you can bid on it and we'll just see what you guys think it's worth. Of course, you'll be bidding against the general public, but I'm not going to advertise it anywhere, and I think most of the general public probably won't just stumble across it and probably aren't looking for a scrap bucket candle holder. I do hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. If you haven't done so already, I would love to if you hit that subscribe button down there. Feel free to stick around, watch a few of the other videos, share the videos with your friends. If you would like to provide financial support for the videos here at Black Bear Forge, there are links in the video description for both PayPal and Patreon. Those are merely donations. The content is free. And of course, you can bid on the auction and buying the things that we make here on the channel does help support the channel as well. In the meantime, I hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, but stay safe.
wear your safety glasses, and we will see you for the next one.